Hi everyone, I'm Jerry Hargrove, the Amazon Lysel Developer Advocate. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy a Django application with Amazon Lysel. So let's get started. To begin with, log into your AWS account and navigate to the Lysel web console, and then from the Instances tab, create a new Lysel instance. When you create a new instance, you're going to have to choose a location or AWS region for that instance to be located. I usually choose a location that's close to me or to my customers, or I might choose a region because I have data sovereignty or some other regional requirements. I'm gonna choose the AWS Oregon region because it's the nearest AWS region to me. When you launch a LightSail instance, you also select a blueprint, and that blueprint includes the operating system and optional applications. For Django, you can choose the Django blueprint, or you can choose an OS-only blueprint and configure it yourself. For this video, I'm gonna go with the latter approach and select an Ubuntu image and then install the required software, including Django myself. I won't need a launch script or a custom SSH key pair, but I am gonna to choose to enable automatic snapshots. Automatic snapshots take daily backups of your instance and provide an easy, low cost backup and recovery option if you ever need it. We hope not, but it's nice to have just in case. Instance plans, also known as bundles, define the capacity of a LightSail instance, and that includes memory, processing, storage, and data transfer allocations. The capacity I require depends on my application and how much demand I expect that application to have. I'm going to choose the lowest capacity and cost option now because I know my site won't get a whole lot of traffic initially. When demand grows and traffic increases, I can always go back and revisit my capacity requirements and change the instance plan as needed. Finally, I'll provide a unique name and then create my light cell instance. After a few minutes, my instance will be provisioned and it's ready for use. When the instance is ready, I'm gonna assign a static IP address to it. The default dynamic public IP address that's attached to my light cell instance changes every time I stop and restart the instance. So I'm gonna create a static IP address and then attach it to my instance to keep the public IP address from changing. Later, if I want to point DNS at it, I don't have to update DNS every time I stop and restart my instance. It makes it so much easier. And static IPs are free as long as they're attached to a light sale instance. Not attached, not free. Back on the instance page, I'm gonna to connect to my light sale instance using the web-based SSH client. I could use whatever SSH client I want to, like PuTTY, or I could connect via the command line, but I'd need to download the default key for the region and then configure my app to use it. On the instance, I'll start installing and configuring my Django application. First, I'll get updates and then install prerequisites like pip and choose a default Python version. Then, once this is done, I'll install Django, GUnicorn and Nginx. We'll be using Django as the app framework, GUnicorn as the Whiskey server, and Nginx to act as a reverse proxy. I'm going to start by installing Django and then creating a sample Django application. I'll use that Django application to just display a default dev page that really just indicates that Django is running correctly. I could use any application here if I wanted to. I will need to make one change though. In order to accept requests, Django needs to know who it's okay to accept requests from. And this is where I'll need the public IP address of my LightSail instance. So I'm gonna edit the settings file and update the allowed host to include the public IP address of my LightSail instance. That's really it for the Django application. Next up is Nginx. Now Nginx is a web and reverse proxy server among other things. And it's great for serving static files and acting as a reverse proxy and a cache. In this video, I won't be serving any static files, but I will be using it as a reverse proxy. First, I'm gonna install Nginx, then I'll create a new config file for my sample app. This simple config sets up Nginx to listen on port 80 for web traffic, and it'll proxy all requests to another server on the same system listening on port 8000. This will later become our Django app being served by GUnicorn. I'll also need to add the public IP address of my LightSail instance here. Once I've saved the Nginx config file, I'll create a soft link to it, and then I'll restart Nginx to load the changes. The last step, is to install and configure GUnicorn. GUnicorn or Green Unicorn or Gunicorn is a popular Python WSGI web server, and it's really ideal for serving up Django applications. After installing GUnicorn, 
I'm simply going to run it and provide some required parameters, like the WSGI file to use. I'm also going to tell it to bind to port 8000. And in this case, we're going to use four workers. I could also choose to bind it to a socket or to a file descriptor. And the number of workers that I'm choosing is generally related to the number of cores available. So if I ever change the bundle or plan associated with my LightSail instance, I might need to come back in here and change that. Now that I've created my Django app, I've set up Nginx, and I've started GUnicorn, I can go to the public IP address of my LightSail server in my browser, and I can see that the sample Django application is up and running. It really was that easy. Before I'm done using my LightSail instance, I'll go back to the LightSail instance page, delete the instance, and also delete the static IP address that I allocated. In this video, I've shown you how easy it is to deploy a Django application with Amazon LightSail. Amazon LightSail is an easy way to get started in the cloud, and it provides predictable pricing, simple interfaces, and easy access to other AWS services. If you'd like more info on other tutorials and information to accompany this video, please check out the video description. For more information about LightSail, please visit the LightSail product page. Thanks.